Welcome back to John's Films. Today, we're going to learn how to 3D composite the moon. We'll need a few things to get started. NASA released, via their scientific visualization studio, the new CGI moon kit. To this, they include a color map, which is a full picture, high resolution moon, and then displace displacement map, which allows us to see the vertical changes as it follows across the moon's surface. These two are mapped over each other to make things extremely easy for us. Download these two maps and let's get to it. All right, we downloaded from NASA the picture and the displacement map. I'll display the picture up in viewer one by dragging it up into the space. I want this to be the outside of my moon. To do that, I will grab a 3D object off the 3D section of the toolbar here on the right, pull it down into my node graph, and hand the 3D shape my media, which is my picture of the map. I'll display my 3D shape up on the screen, and you can see that it's currently a plane, which I can change here in the inspector on the right. I choose sphere, and boom, I have a moon. Now, I'm not happy here, because what happens when I try and put it to my output frames, it doesn't work. In order for that to happen with 3D objects, you have to add a tool. You can do that by hitting shift and space, then searching for rend, and I get my renderer, which takes 3D workspaces and turns them into two-dimensional objects for my output. And immediately, I see that up here in my output window. Now, this is cool, admittedly extremely cool, because we have a complete three-dimensional world here on my screen. However, I think we can do better. So for the shape, I'm going to add a transform, three-dimensional because I'm still working on a three-dimensional object. And here I will keyframe from the first frame in my timeline to the last frame here. I will keyframe a rotation of say around 360-ish degrees, doesn't have to be perfect at this point, but that's just getting it to rotate once. And if I play, sure enough, the shape is rotating. Here we are, nice. All right, so now that I've got a rotating shape, I'd like to get a little bit more dramatic with it by adding some lighting and say a camera so I can control the lighting and the view. Although, you know, something we could do now would be to use our displacement map. To do that, I hit shift and spacebar while I've got transform highlighted red so that it will add it in line afterwards. Now with my displacement, I'm going to pull my displacement map from media down into my node graph and pipe it into the top of the displacement. It turns into my displacement object and we'll put the renderer out on node two here. And we will displace based on the luminance values of my displacement map. So view that on one and you can see that it has taken the brighter regions and raised them up in the darker regions and punched them down. But the scale is way too hot. So I will pull it down a little bit, and this is just going to add a little bit of depth and contrast, especially once we start putting in real lights. This is just the default lighting. Now I'm going to move out, create some room, and behind the Displace 3D, Shift Spacebar, I'm going to add a merge node. And this has to be a 3D merge because it's in the 3D portion of our node tree. And I will now add a, let's go with a spotlight here that I will merge in, as well as a camera. Now the three-dimensional camera provides you the ability to change your point of view inside your three-dimensional world. Both of these were added at the origin, which happens to be the center, let's just move this out, the center of the world there. And now I've pulled it out the side by using these individual handles, which only move on one axis, no matter how many times you move around. I'm gonna switch here the top so that I can get a tilt axis move, and here we go. Now I can change my angle so that I'm definitely pointing directly at the world. The moon, I suppose. Go back to movement. I'm going to merge this into my Merge 3D, and I will then merge in a spotlight. Now to make this work, on my renderer, I need to click on the renderer and at the lighting tab down here on the inspector, enable lighting and enable shadows. That will tell it, hey look, I'm gonna be putting some lighting here. I need you to be able to render it. And now I will pull the lighting out of the center and you can see immediately it's taking the view of the camera and 
it is using the dynamic lighting that I'm pulling back. So let's change this camera a touch. Instead of filling up the screen entirely, I'm going to pull back so that I can get away from it and get a bigger view of this. Now the radius on this shape is probably too big, so I can come here and pull the radius down and immediately shrink it down to where it will fit inside my world. I can angle that spotlight by highlighting it and clicking the rotate button, much like, whoop, there we go, much like I can do with the camera. Now we've keyframed it so it rotates. What if we were to change the perspective as we're working? So we know that it's rotating, Additionally, I'm going to move the camera. So the camera, I can keyframe its position using up here on the, on the right in the inspector, this transform tab inside the camera. I'm going to keyframe the position back here starting at the beginning by turning on keyframing for the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And I'm going to keyframe the angle of the camera as well. Now I will move to the end of the timeline and I'm gonna back out just a touch here so that I can see what's going on. And I'm going to, now that I've got my playhead at the very end of this time, I'm going to adjust this camera so that I can get a slightly different view. Let's go up to the right. And now we're going to rotate over and then back down so that I can get that back into my, my view. Let's make sure, see I'm missing it there. All right, so let's rotate this green over a little bit more and there's my planet. All right, now the key question here is going to be, did we keep the planet in frame the entire time that we were rotating? Looks like we stayed close. As the planet moves, uh, that's pretty cool. The camera moves. Neato. All right, the last thing that we could do to make this cool after we render it out, obviously, I'm going to add a glow. And so I'll hit my node. Using my glow, I'm now able to pull the image into the glow and back out of the glow. And looking at media to out, you can see it really popped up the, there we go. So you can change the glow size that hazes it up a touch. I'm gonna pull the amount of glow woo, down some, trying to mat it out just a touch. And I think that that's gonna work pretty well. It's using a fast Gaussian Filter, you can choose all different types to see how you want to change the blend on it. Now we have a keyframed world that if we go back into our edit tab, we're going to see the view of the camera while the moon rotates. And we end up with quite something that can be difficult to render at first, but is going to look really cool once it gets going. There we go. Nice shine to it. Good depth out of the displacement that we did just to get a little bit more contrast. One thing we can do if we want to is go back into our fusion composition, choose the three-dimensional shape, and where you see these base subdivisions, we can bump the quality up. By pulling these up, it creates more facets, uh, smaller facet size. See, here's three subdivisions, here's 80. Creates a much rounder shape and allows those other extrusions to come through and look pretty darn good. Now we'll go back to our timeline and see what that's done. It will dramatically slow down your render time, which is why you don't want to do it while you're working on it. And I took my displacement down just a touch, down to 0.016, and it seems to have smoothed it out and looks really sharp as it's coming across the screen. All right, if you thought this was a pretty cool trick, then please do me a favor, click like and subscribe so you catch this in the future. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day.